Um, I'm starting the recording. Um, I apologize, I have to wear this mask according to the library rules since I have someone else in the room with me here. And um, I'd just like you to meet Jerry, who is a local um, born and raised in Sturgeon Bay. And after he finished high school, he was recruited by the, um, the army yeah. to um, go to Germany. And he's going to be giving us a program on his experiences in November for Veterans Day. He's done it here in the library in the past, but never on Zoom. So I'm trying to teach him to use, um, to become familiar with Zoom. So he's joining us today, but he has a lot of Door County genealogy in his background. I've turned off his sound so that the echo doesn't um, bother anyone. So it looks like we're getting more people now. Um, it's just about time to start. So how has everyone been? Any um, new finds in your back in your genealogy or research? Other than an absolute, other than an absolute mess in my uh, tree and all my documentation, <laughs> so I'm un I'm untangling and cleaning up a lot of stuff before I upgrade to uh, iOS 15. So I thought I might try to clean all this up, but it's a bigger job. Yeah, than I ever imagined. Mm -hmm. I got yeah. duplicates of duplicates of duplicates of duplicates scattered <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> I'm so glad it's not me, dude. Uh, or Steve, geez, I know. So I've been working on it uh, before I could dig into too much and then relink all the media properly if it got unlinked somewhere along the way. And oh, well, it's a chance to look at everything again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm wondering if anyone has worked on the Pioneer or the Century Certificate that the Wisconsin Genealogical Society offers. I have not done it, but I think it's been around a while, hasn't it? I think so too. Um, I think um, some of my ancestors have done it. Yeah, I, I'm just wondering if anybody's done it and you know what kind of roadblocks they ran into or challenges. Well, I'd be interested in hearing what you come across when you get started. I, I think I'm going to do the, uh, the century one because that's for the relatives that have been here for over a hundred years. Um, I think I also have a pioneer relative as well, but I thought I'd start with the century and kind of see how that goes. Yeah, that would be really interesting. So if you could let us know as you go. Um, sure. Where do you find this? Um, where do you get started? Well, it's out on the Wisconsin um, Genealogical Society, just on their website. And they have a little blurb on there about the century and the pioneer certificates. Mm -hmm. And so unfortunately you have to join to be able to, you know, submit it, it. Which, and, and really the cost is, it was, I didn't find that much. So I did join that. But what was fascinating, um, one of the sample certificates that, that they had out there, you know, to show people how to do it was actually my brother-in-law's that he had, <laughs> that he had done for, for my in-laws, you know, years ago when the Germans settled in Washington County. So it was interesting to see his work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is, um, I know that way you have it really documented. Is anyone a member of the DAR here? No, I'm trying, I'm trying, but no, no not yet. <laughs> Yeah, that's another big process. Well, I'm glad you could join us, Tom. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know what, can you hear me okay? Yes, we hear you. Yeah, okay. actually we can. I don't know why my, uh, there it is. Okay, now my now my PC is working. For some reason it wasn't working, so I'm on my laptop. That's okay. okay. I mean my uh, iPad, so. Well, for those of, <laughs> who, uh, those of you who are late, I have to wear a mask because it's the library rules. Um, for for the staff, so I hope you hear me all right. And um, I also oh, yeah. have Jerry here, who is going to be doing a program in November. On um, he grew up in uh, Sturgeon Bay, and he's doing a program in November on his experience going to Germany during the Cold War. And um, he he'll do it for Veterans Day, the day before Veterans Day. He did it in the past, but he'll be repeating it. So I'm trying to get him accustomed to Zoom. So he's doing pretty well so far. <laughs> Has he been watching Foil's War at all? Foil's War? That's a 
Have you watched Foil's War? That's a um, TV series. No. Is that set during the Cold War? Uh, it starts no. at the end of World War II and then goes in through the Cold War and a bunch of stuff. It's uh, no. pretty heavy duty stuff for a, for an entertaining show, but uh, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of stuff on it. That's, I turned that's his um, sound off so it wouldn't echo in this room, but um, from hearing him before, it's really interesting because he ended up being recruited right out of high school here in Sturgeon Bay. And he went over to Germany and he became a code breaker is basically, isn't that what it was in um, the old old days. And so he'll tell about that and um, Germany and life there and the whole thing. It's really fascinating. So I recommend- And that's on the 11th? It's the day before Veterans Day. I think it's on our calendar. So that'd be on a Wednesday. Yep. Yeah, it's on the calendar. So uh, feel free to join us. So we're trying to get it, Jerry, up to snuff on Zoom. <laughs> Wave at <What>? them, Jerry. <laughs> there he is. Um, so I have a sort of, I've uh, been, someone who does a lot of research in, well, before I get into that, let me point out that this weekend, the Belgian Heritage Center is doing a big um, reenactment of the um, Pestigo fire and the experiences in Door County during that time. So I think they'll have it on their website, but um, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, they'll be doing things over there. And they have a new video that they've created using um, interviews and things that they'll be showing um, at the center over in Brussels area. So I would, if anyone's interested in that, um, that should be interest, fun to go to. Um, I've someone who works here in the library all the time, one of the best researchers I know, came across a very strange thing on find a grave. So I'm gonna jump right into this and see what you think I should do about it. Um, I do not have an account there to, to do any managing or any of any tweaking, but um, this person, his name is Mike, went in and um, saw a recent um, person passed away and he was immediately put on find a grave. And so looking at his family, Mike found all sorts of people who were related to this person who did not appear to be real. And it got oh. to be almost silly and it was mystifying in the beginning, um, but we're sort of finding uh, more and more about this situation. Let me quickly share my screen and I'll show you one of the things that we found. Like. Let me see, here's my, um, so here's my, does everyone see this? Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. this was the first one that stood out right away. Dr. Mifflin <laughs> Philip from, uh, who died and lived and died in Sturgeon Bay, was at Bayside supposedly. And you can see there's a, there was a pretty long uh, write up on his army experiences and Mike knew it right away this was not right because none of it checked out. He, you know, there are about five family members that were posted who are totally fabricated. Mike went over to the register of deeds and found, uh, did not find anything there. And then I, um, he brought this to my attention and I took the pictures. You can go right click and uh, download the pictures. And then I threw them in. Um, I don't know if anyone uses Google images. If you type in Google images, you get this, um, this thing where you can drop pictures in. Uh, let me show you basically how it works. I have it all set up somewhat here, but you get this little thing here and you can drag and drop a picture in there and it'll pop up with guesses. So I put the first picture in there. And when you scroll down, you start seeing that there's all sorts of, you know, here's the same exact picture, right? That this person has put on the find a grave for this so-called so um, Sturgeon Bay person, right? So that was one of them. But then you notice there's also here, let me, I don't wanna get too many tabs here. There's also the picture of um, Miff as, a, as an older gentleman and that came up also, here it is. So obviously this person is fabricating. You know, you can see it's taken from uh, fine art America, that sort of thing. Has anyone seen anything like this before? No. <laughs> and no, so um, here's the person I, we looked at. Um, so those were things I saved because this person has taken 
that down. But the person goes by the name of Anonymous. And he manages all these things. <laughs> let me see it. Now let me close this up. I get too much on my screen and then it gets tricky. Um, so here's Anonymous. And he has 82 he's um, added and he manages 150. So when you look at some of the things that uh, he has now, he keeps changing th things. So I had like a whole family of people. And when we really looked closely, we figured out what he did was invent a twin sister for someone who is real. And um, then from the twin sister, he had her husband who, you know, and their daughter, and then the daughter's husband who was in World War II. That picture came from a World War II site, um, museum site. So um, he's pretty elaborate and you can look down here. Let's see, somewhere near the bottom, I found one recently. You could check, I think the ones with the real graves, uh, stones are uh, real, but the ones with some of these pictures that are too perfect in a way, this one, for example, um, I found these peop this picture on a site also by dropping it in um, Google Images. And I tried to find anything on this person. There's nothing there. So let me see. There's one now. Let me see if I can find this. Miller. Um, it, it's not on this one, I guess. He created one recently that really had Mike upset because it's a Miller, you know, M-O-E-L-L-E-R, how they spell it up here, <clears throat> not finding it, that's funny. Um, but he had this person as, uh, well, hold on, bear with me, uh, technology is a little bit too much for me once in a while. Um, I saved some of these because I knew he would probably be taking them down. So here's um, Chester Miller. And there is an actual um, note here about a Chester Miller, but he has this story he's written. And it and there Chester Miller, I found the actual obituary, and he was buried. Um, he he is actually at St. Joseph Mausoleum, but this tells that he was a member of the um, uh, Mormon Church and followed that Jesse James Jesse String and that or the family did. And it says he was married at a church in Inst uh, the Mormon Church and Institute. And anyone who knows Institute knows that there's no such thing, right? Uh, but I, yeah, speak up. Can I, can I ask a quick question? One of the, yeah. th it's kind of surprising that you see all of these pictures and this additional information to the extent on a particular individual, because normally all I ever find is maybe a blurb from the obituary and then a picture mm -hmm. of the gravestone and usually a picture of the graveyard. Mm -hmm. I've never seen other photos or lots of documentation attached to any of my family people. And All I've right. got probably hundreds of them. Yeah. So to me, that might be the first yeah. uh, I, I warning guess my, signal. Well, yeah, I guess. Also, else that all that stuff? That one, underneath, did you try going to that one Underneath that one picture, it says who MPG. Did you try that? That is Mike, who I'm who's the one who discovered oh, all okay, this. Okay, okay. So okay. he put this up saying that um, this is fake. This is anonymous here, right? Okay. So this is anonymous who's putting up these fake things. So huh. um, I just wonder what you think I should do as far as find a grave goes. Does anyone yeah. have any? Um, and I and it's endless. There's so many of these. Yeah. Some are real. Some are not real. And through investigative work, I think um, there's one of them who comes up. This man is taken from. Here's another one. Um, so as I say, there's just so many of them. So I can stop sharing my screen and let's yeah. see. Now I wrote to, I don't have an account there. So I wrote, uh, you can contact find a grave. And I wrote a little note saying we're finding, I'm the librarian here. We're finding false people. Mm -hmm. um, but I never heard back from them. Yeah, and Mike, I, um, Mike has put up those flowers and so he has a friend who's also putting up those flowers saying these are false. But then the person who did it puts up things saying, this is my great, great grandfather and all this sort of thing. So, um, mm -hmm. How do we stop him? 
Because <laughs> this is, you know, kind of um, unfortunate in my opinion. I guess, why would somebody even want to do something like that? Well, is there any request for money anywhere? Yeah, that's what I'm wondering too. Why is he doing it? You know, Follow the money usually. Well, here's what I, um, I don't want to name names, but we did, um, I did follow through. Some of these people are gone now. There was the granddaughter of Mifflin, Philip, and she, I, when I searched on her name and I was trying to, to verify her, she had a, was on an obituary site where it did say you could send in some money keep, to keep her memory alive. But I don't think that's the real reason that it was being done. However, the person left his name there. And I believe it's a very young person who's doing this. I'm kind of, um, I, I, on my Facebook, I belong to the Find a Grave Facebook group. Uh -huh. Although I'm not a member of Find a Grave, um, if you you know go to the website, I can browse a course, but I can't respond to people or right. make comments because I'm not a member. Mm -hmm. You used to be able to, but you can't anymore. But that first picture you showed looked familiar to me, so I'm kind of scrolling through my Find a Grave uh, Facebook group, but. Um, there are people, judging by the comments that I've read on this uh, Facebook group, mm -hmm. who, I mean, they just browse obituaries in the paper. They pick out somebody, mm -hmm. they put them, they create a memorial is what it's called for them. Um, may or may not be, you know, related, makes no difference. It's like numbers. They want to have numbers you know, yeah. the most memorials ever placed or something. And often you know, there'll be posters in the group that say, God, my dad just died, you know, two days ago, and I'm going to go put a memorial with information on it. And there's one already been established. That's exactly how this started. How yeah, this and there started. are people that do do that. Um, yeah. I don't know how you can get through to find a grave unless a member of find a grave like if this mike that you're talking about is a member that he could make well he must be because he posted something yeah there mm -hmm. um that perhaps he can i guess all you can do is remember? try to get it's all volunteer driven so what kind yeah, of a I, quick I, response he will get find, to a complaint i don't know but i'm find I'm, a grave I'm, is owned by ancestry is yeah it? now Right. And so maybe you can respond to ancestry. I don't know if they'll do any good. You're right. Yeah. Um, and yeah. I and through a lot of not my research, Mike and his other friends, um, they discovered who this is. And it looks like it's a very young boy. Um, so we don't want to really tangle with him too much. Um, but I'm trying to figure out a way to stop him from posting all these false right. things. He probably doesn't right. even understand what he's doing. Is this a, is a local boy? Obviously not a local boy. Yes, it is. It is a local boy. Oh, yeah. okay. Interesting. Oh. Okay. Wow. And this, this is all tied to the family of the first white settler in Door County, Increase Claflin, which, which <laughs> makes it very interesting. Wow. Maybe he, maybe wow. he's just sadly, but maybe he's just trying to be mischievous and you know make or just. In, I think he yeah. may be just interested in history and doesn't see the um, what he's doing is causing damage to the site. Yeah, yeah. So or he's my, got a I'm trying to. Off. Yeah, I just wish I could stop him from putting up the false ones and leave. Well, is it okay? Since you know who it is, or you think you know who it is, well, Mike, does it Mike make does. it? Yeah, okay. Does it make any sense that the um, somebody from the Door County uh, Historical Museum, like Rice or somebody like that, uh, contact him, you know, and uh, you know, in a non-threatening manner and talk to them and see what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody that is, that is, you or know, the, par title, the parents you know? possibly. I mean, you, even, you know, even you, I mean, you with your title could probably do the same thing if you're a mind to, you know? Yeah. Uh, um, 
Our I children's don't know. librarian said maybe talk to his parents. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that would, it, since you know who it is, I would recommend doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's really the only way you're going to stop it. Now, if he's just a hacker trying to do it for some, you know, hacker thing, hacker initiation thing, you know, well, that's a different story. Then you're going to have more of a problem, you know. Maybe it's just trying to create a legacy. Right. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. You have to talk yeah. to him, I think. That's that's a good point. I yeah. think just since you know who it is, I think, and yeah, you need to talk to him or his parents or I, I guess depending on how old he is, I would talk, I would talk to him. If he's less than say high school age, I guess I would talk to his parents. Yeah. Yep. All right. Well, I'm going to try. I may try that. I haven't. I, as I said, my first thing was to try to contact Find a Grave, but they're not responding. And no. it almost seems like they should have a way to deal with things like this because. Well, that's, you know, the church, you know, the, uh, that's what's nice about find, uh, Family Search is that they do have a way you can, if you find intentional errors, you know, mm -hmm. they will you can contact them and they will arbitrate it, mm -hmm. you know, and go after the person. I mean, they say they will, I don't know, I've never experienced it, but they yeah. say they will. So I thought Ancestry did as well. From them. They mistaken. probably do. I would think mm -hmm. they would, they would have I'm a- not sure, but interest. I thought I, I read would, somewhere they do. Yeah, I would think they'd have a vested interest to make as much oh, yeah. accurate <laughs> yeah, uh, information on there as they can, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, okay. I'll that that's something that's good advice and i'll have to figure out what i'll do next but um i'll let you know <laughs> yeah i mean yeah. As, Here, as an, i guess i'm thinking you know one last thing i'll say and then i'll shut up but you know as a individual you probably would have less stroke than if you were representing a known entity like the library or well, historical yeah. society you know that might have a little more weight. I don't know. I did. In, I did write to um, to them and said I was with the library, but it's like just sending the thing down a dark hole. I oh, yeah, if anyone reads it. Yeah, because well, once Ancestry bought it, they probably reduced staff and everything yeah. to make it profitable. You know, so. So it makes you question everything you see, which we already know as a role of theology, yeah. right? <laughs> back it up, you know, back, come with more than one source, yeah. mm -hmm. independent source. So that's my big story for the week, for the month. Wow. Weird. <laughs> that was yeah. a good one. <laughs> <laughs> it took quite a bit of figuring out to um, really analyze it. So... Any other um, news this week? Anyone at all? Mm. Someone must have done something. <laughs> well. I've been a little lax, I'm afraid. Um, yeah, but I, I'll tell you, I've been getting very frustrated with Family Search in their new, um, uh, what's the word I'm trying to find? Their new uh, protocol with searching i like the old system they've changed yeah. to a new system and i'm finding it i'm giving it time because i you know i may not get all the bells and whistles on it yet but it is so difficult it's where you have really? to do two and three clicks to try I, to do what you used to do in one click i i and, will see i noticed that also i agree with you Oh, oh, okay. It's a nightmare. And I'm on the another Facebook group, um, uh, Family Search Users Group on Facebook. And um, if you don't use those, those are kind of good things, you guys. You learn a lot about what's yeah. going on. Um, yeah. Uh, even your uh, whatever you've got, Roots Magic or Legacy or anything, they all right. have users groups. But anyway, right. um, the Family Search, the people are going nuts. It's just course you almost always hear about the complaints more than you do the good stuff but um it, it's not going over well at mm -hmm. all their new search features and um then i switched over to ancestry and they've screwed around with theirs too i don't know 
<laughs> what if they got time on their hands? I, I, you know, why not just leave, spend more time adding records and things like that instead of screwing around with trying to figure out how to search on them? They've um, really, uh, uh, I don't know, like many programs, it's sort of like you have something good going and somebody's got to tweak it somehow, thinks it's going to be easier and it really turns into be a mess. So I foresee an awful lot of uh, updates from family search, <laughs> doing fixes and things like that, because uh, it's, I'm getting very frustrated. That's really why I haven't gone to anywhere too much uh, on it. I've just gotten so frustrated with it. It's uh, not worth it to me. It used to be great, but uh, the images are still okay. Family search, when you go for images, you're still, that's as, but the general search program is awful. And they hide stuff, you know, used to be put in the date or a range, market exact or not, or one or two. Now you have to dig around to try to find where it is that you can uh, put in a random date if you're if it's not known, and it's uh, it's gotten very difficult. So I'm not fond of their new search features. Well, my cl class is having a reunion, and so I've been trying to help with find people. And I'll say, I found the same thing. It was easier, and then all of a sudden it changed, and it was much more difficult. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. But speaking of family search, they supposedly announced that they had completed their mm -hmm. digit. I can't even say it. Digitizing the uh, their um, microfilm and microfish. Right. Yeah, uh, that they were finished with that project, which is got man, that's got to, and so then it's all accessible now on the internet. So. Yeah, only only problem with that, Tom, is yeah. it's digitized, but it has not been indexed. So you're going to. Right. Yeah. You, you got to. Yeah, you got to search. Yeah. Search. <laughs> yeah. 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 I told you my experience with that, didn't I? Where maybe maybe you didn't hear that, but I went through. I have a family. It's my mother's family. The last name is L-A-A-B-S. OK. And I know where they were and so on in Germany. Well, it's now Poland, but because it, it was Pomerania. But anyway, and I went through, God, I went through 100 years of church records for, well, total a couple of churches and looking for L-A-A-B-S. And I got all finished, okay, <laughs> and found some. And then I realized through another class somewhere that the Germans at that time, and maybe they still do, if they have a double word like, double letter like that, they'll put one down with a dot above it mm -hmm. instead uh -huh. of the double. And so uh -huh. I saw all kinds of those, <laughs> L-A-B-S. <laughs> so now I got to go through, go back through all that. You know, I didn't know that. You know? Oh, and of course, they don't put the dot right above the A. You know, like we all do, we get sloppy and maybe it's above the B, but they really mean it above the A. You know? <laughs> I feel your pain. I know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you oh, did well. that, when you did that, Tom, were you able to find any relatives in oh, the yeah. home country that oh, you could yeah. visit? I mean, living ones like that you could oh. Oh, visit uh, or? You know, I didn't look for living ones. I was looking for. I, once they left the area and came to the United States, I stopped looking over there. Uh, but I know there's a okay. there's a churchyard which is now Catholic because they were evangelical Lutherans at the time. And when they kicked when Poland kicked all the Lutherans out of Germany, uh, excuse me, out of Poland, um, I'm sure there's a bunch of graves over there at this one church at a place called Sorica, C E R. W-I-K or something like that. That's got to be my family. It's ancestors, you know, if they still have the graves there. But I haven't, no, okay. I haven't, I was, I was I haven't just gone funny. to present. Yeah, I have not gone to present day because I, over there, because like I say, once they moved here to the United States, I stopped looking over there. Okay. I'm just wondering if anybody else had information on that, either connected with like personalized heritage tours or, because I'm thinking in the meantime, since we're all in Zoom anyway, it'd be fun to Zoom with relatives, mm -hmm. you know, from our ancestral homelands until we can make a visit over yeah. there. So I just wondered if anybody had ever done that through through lines or 
or any other way? Not me. Well, I went over there, you know, two, two years, a little over two years ago uh, to the Weissensel family, you know, and I did go to their heritage site on my own and had a really interesting and then the interesting time with the local historian and then he the last minute of the last day that I was with him he makes the comment he says you know the wise and cells didn't originate in this town and I thought why <laughs> didn't you tell me that before <laughs> oh yeah, okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, I, I'd like to thank everybody on this genealogy club on the Zoom calls that we've had um, for pointing me in the direction of the census records. I think that was a discussion that we had months ago about the different kinds of census records that are out there in the 1800s. And mm -hmm. I actually had an interesting find taking your advice. My great great grandfather in his obituaries, and again, I'm the one that have all the relatives in Washington County, and then everybody branched out all over in the state. My great great grandfather in his obit, it reads that he was paralyzed for 12 years and he died when he was 54 years old. And I always wondered what happened to him that he was basically incapacitated for so long. And I was going through census records. And I noticed, you know, taking your advice, I noticed that some of them actually had listed if the person was sick and if they were sick, what did they have? And he did show up on a census record in the 1800s about, I think about 1870 or something uh, that he was sick and he actually had rheumatoid paralysis. So I would have rheumatoid. never- wow. I would have mm. never found that out because he had mm. no death certificate that I can find. Mm. So I, I talked to some of the medical people in, in my family and they said, yes, if you have rheumatoid arthritis so bad, it can paralyze you. So that's basically did, what he had. Did, was mm. he in the military, Denise, no, at all? Not at all. Not at all. Oh, okay. Because the mm -hmm. 1890 census, as we all know, is just virtually doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But however, they did have in 1890, um, I don't know if you call it a supplement or whatever, of the veterans that was that survived. So mm -hmm. I found a couple of my ancestors on the 1890 veterans schedule, um, where I didn't really tell you too much, except that they were they had served, uh, they were disabled, and often, or well, not all the time, but they would write uh, in a third column, make remarks about what it was. Mm -hmm. Now, one of mine had um, rheumatism. That was the only word used. And mm -hmm. he was disabled because of that. But I haven't been able to figure out how he got it, maybe, or if it was war-related. But, um, but if anybody searching 1890, if you if they were veterans, there is there are veteran schedules that did survive apparently. Okay, yeah. You able, just, have you been able to find an obituary at all? Uh, for my grand for great great grandfather. Yeah, great great grandfather. Yes, yes. In the local, sometimes that'll say that he he you know he suffered from this disease for a number of years before. Right. There, there was all, They were very right. good about being very descriptive in some of the obits. Right. Yeah. Where they, there, there was an obit in the local papers from the West Bend area, and it did talk about him being paralyzed, though, but it didn't say what had happened didn't say to why. him. Okay. And he was a farmer, so I always thought, well, it probably was some kind of accident or something. So I was kind of just, uh, to me, I was very excited to find, well, kind of, you know, it was, it was too bad for him, but to kind of know what happened to him and why he was incapacitated. Um, my great, great grandfather, he's the only one right now in the family that I cannot find the naturalization record on. And I can find everybody else, you know, all the great, great aunts, or I should say great, great uncles, and even the cousins, the neighbors, but I can't find this great, great grandfather. So for me, that's like a major roadblock. No, I understand so. that because I had a great 
found the obituary for one of mine and they talked about how he had a heart attack while he was in church and so and so <laughs> helped carry him out and I mean they really go into a lot of detail sometimes mm -hmm. they do know but it yeah, helps yeah. when you're trying to figure things out like that so yeah yeah those those old bits those old old bits sometimes are just fascinating to read oh, with the the information and the stories oh, that absolutely. Are out there. So. even even in the um or oh, what you might call the society columns of the old newspapers. Yep. Uh, you know, so-and-so came to visit so-and-so mm -hmm. and uh, has now returned home or whatnot. But you can often glean right. little, uh, yeah. like one of my ancestors who I'm having so much trouble finding, I don't know, I think he's four grades back, but um, he did put ads in the paper when he found a horse on his property and somebody, you know, you come and get it and pay for my storage of it. It's yours. You can, but that's it. I mean, it doesn't have, you know, there's an awful lot of stolen or lost horses in the old days, I'll tell you. <laughs> Just to know who went to what tea party and who went uh -huh. to who. Yeah. And, right. Oh yeah, it's, some great it, stories. Yeah, it, it is interesting, you know, how these papers are connected to. Um, I have a great, great uncle that actually is buried in um, Maplewood in Forestville. And so he's a great, great uncle. But yet his father lived in Washington County. And I think it was in the one of the Door County papers up here in the 1800s. It reported that my great, great uncle's father, the one that lived in Washington County, was killed. He was kicked in the head by a horse. And I found that information up in the Door County yeah. newspaper. So I thought that was fascinating. Yeah, those newspapers are great. Mm -hmm, they are. I, I'm kind of chuckling because I, I made a sticky note for myself and I put it right on top of my master list. And it said, stop researching, start organizing. Well, <laughs> that's not kind of <laughs> happening. I start researching and then I'm down a bunch of different rabbit holes, but I do find stuff, but it's, uh, I find that much more interesting. Like you were talking, Steve, about organizing your files and I'm going, oh my word, mine are just awful because I get bored. I start and I get bored. And so I go back to yeah, something's around. half done. Things are half done. You got a half a folder of this and a half a folder of that. And now you don't even work along. So, yeah. I know. I, I know. know I'm not the only one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm right there with you. <laughs> uh, but I do, I, think do. Gretchen, I think Gretchen has the most of anybody, though. Oh, probably. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Have you ever been to, if, you, yeah. if you haven't been to her uh, house and seen all of it, uh, you're in for a treat if you get to go. Oh, yeah. Lord. There's Basically, she's got in, that hole upstairs. Yeah, the loft. <laughs> Must be yeah. 1,500 square feet of stuff, you know. <laughs> I don't know how she keeps it. Of course, she was, wasn't that what she did when she was working, wasn't it? She was a uh, something to do with history and research yeah, and that. I believe that's right. When, when she was working, so when she was employed. But, uh, uh, well, Laura, you, you had a chance to look at uh, the baptism. Those, and yes. Birth thing that um, they, work that they gave you and you had a question about whether or not that should be published uh on the website or just put it up so people can access it what do you yeah is, is i mean it, I, I don't have I per, me personally but i'm not the only one that worked on it so uh, but i would like like to recognize make sure we recognize the people who worked on it and so when we i we did put together a list of those people so mm -hmm. i would just like to add that you know to um that because there was quite a few people who worked quite hard on that mm -hmm. and yet the other problem if you will with it we have never totally finished going back and checking all of the transcriptions to make sure they're correct mm -hmm. and so i don't know if we need to put a caveat on that or not but I probably do really that, you know, these have not been verified completely They're you know, they they were taken from the Xerox copies of the church records. And then somebody sat there and put it into the computer. So um, if you can't read the handwriting uh, and then, and the Catholic mm -hmm. ones were in Latin on top of it. So um, 
Okay, but I have the ones for, and I'm working on, <laughs> I'm working on the uh, uh, marriage and death burial ones, and mm -hmm. they'll be just like that. And I'll send uh, as soon as I get them done, I'll pass them on to you. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how we want to present them online. Um, you know, you know, if we had, they're all in Excel spreadsheets. Okay, mm -hmm. so if we had somebody that was very knowledgeable in database development, like like uh, access, it would be, mm -hmm. I'm sure, for them, five minutes at work, or you know, an hour's worth of work, and they put it all together in a nice little um, database that you could do inquir uh, uh, queries on. Mm -hmm. uh, I am not that person. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not either. I don't have that knowledge. Well, if someone can come up with someone, let me know. Yeah, <laughs> we'll figure yeah, something yeah. out. <laughs> but yeah. Um, I I'll was check gonna... with somebody I know that's real well versed in uh, Microsoft and yeah. uh, those pro particular uh, programs, and I'll see if he'd be willing to do it. Sure, yeah. that'd be great. It'd be nice information to have available to people. Yeah, they're not, you know, we don't have, churches did not give us 100%, from what I understand, 100% of the records, but we got most, we got quite a few, and some mm -hmm. of the records didn't exist, so, you know. Well, someone was talking about trying, well, I know always reading the handwriting is the tricky thing, isn't it? Yeah. Like trying to transcribe something. Um, I just recently found out that with Google Photographs, you can um, take a picture of words and it does instant OCR, which is optical character recognition mm -hmm. and translates it into mm -hmm. text. Has anyone mm -hmm. else stumbled on that? No, but that's neat. No. Yeah, well, remember, it's not 100%. Nothing, Nothing is, Tom. <laughs> I know, but it's not 100%. And, so you get some interesting oh, right. words, you know, because it depends on how well the person wrote, you know. Well, uh, I Apple, was, yeah. Apple iOS 15 is going to be doing that also with, once you upgrade to it. And if you have a later model phone, you'll be able to do the same thing. That's exactly what. Um, and translate. So, by the way, yeah. in, Google, in Apple, you'll be able to take a picture of some stuff and translate it immediately. And here too. Right. Yeah. Well, that I would was, be nice if you have foreign language. I'll show you, a, I was gonna bring my, I can't remember my Google um, login and I'm on a library computer, but I have this on my phone. I was taking pictures of things from the Lori History Room to put on um, Facebook. So I happen to have, well, you probably don't see this, but this is a text from a little booklet on Latham Smith. And so this is in Google Photos, which is that sort of pinwheel looking app. So at the bottom, there's a thing that, the, and Apple does the same thing. This lens, does everyone see that? It pulls up, um, it does a sort of sparkly thing and then it highlights the text. This is a photograph, mm. not mm. a document. And then at the bottom, you can click a button saying select text. And you can, as, as you were saying, you can translate or I'm gonna pick push this, it says listen. And the, the thing will start, um, I think I did, I turn off my sound. Iver Johnson, Robert Johnson, William A. Johnson, Kenneth it's A. Reading Jordan, from the photograph. Hiram G. Joslin, James Juckum. It's a list of people um, involved with Latham Smith, but it did that wow. from a photograph to text where it reads it out loud. And I thought that was pretty neat. Kind of frightening. <laughs> and so yeah, as, well, as you're saying, um, Steve, well, if, you, well, if you find a foreign document, Give it a try. <laughs> and yeah, you can translate it. it back. That's pretty well, cool. You know, that really helps. Here's the funny thing. My husband happens to be Turkish. So he was translating some English into Turkish and he was just laughing, and laughing <laughs> at the way they pronounce the words. And when the voice doesn't, um, doesn't know how to pronounce a word, it'll spell it out. So it's pretty interesting. Wow. Play around with it and uh, see what you can do. You can do it if you have a Google account on internet also using that app that's built so into that's the google, google suite that's google photos to yeah. what um photos you to... you take a picture of it and you yeah. put it in you know this little yeah can anyone see that that sort of pinwheel shape if you go to your okay. gmail oh, that's, account, okay. if you go to gmail account in the upper right you'll see 
nine little dots, like a little uh -huh. grid. Yeah. And when you click on that, you'll see Google Photos is one of the uh, items in the list. And if you have right. anything there that's right. a picture of words, give it a try. It oh, lets okay. you do it on, on a computer also. Right. In Apple, in Apple, they're calling it live text. And I was on a Zoom meeting yesterday, class I'm taking on the 15. Mm -hmm. They said this was something that was started in the late 1970s and has now just come to fruition between Google and Apple and a couple other uh, mm -hmm. programs out there as well. And they said, this is just the first steps into taking this thing into God only knows what. Yeah. Well, I'll just say this. My daughter-in-law found that it's really great for identifying plants also. Yes. So oh. if, you, if you click that lens, it'll try to identify the picture of the flower and then bring up all sorts of articles about it. Oh, oh yeah. Give it a try. It's a lot of Travelers fun. Travelers like it when you go up to a restaurant and if the, and if the menu is in a foreign language, you take yeah. a picture of it and they'll translate it into English for you. Yep. Mm -hmm. So something to think about, especially yes. with genealogy. Well, why am I beginning to find feel more and more obsolete? <laughs> hey, Tom, we've been obsolete for years. <laughs> <laughs> I have no value. I can see that. <laughs> No, we're a drug on we're a drag on society, I think. Right, exactly. <laughs> well, I'll I'll mention um a fun uh, reference um question I had a while back was about had to do with a sunken ship here in Sturgeon Bay. And um the gentleman was doing research. They wrote a paper. I have the paper. He said I could share it with everyone. But it's a ship called the Pride that sank in Egg Harbor. And through the newspapers, he had found some information. Um, the Pride was owned by someone um, named uh, Wilson. And the sh on the ship, the son of the, of the captain drowned in Egg Harbor. They were, they were on the, the father and son were on the ship and a big storm came up and the ship tipped over and the father escaped, but the son was trapped and died. And they hauled, then hauled the ship down to um, Sturgeon Bay. And the boy was buried, he was 24, buried in base, um, Bayside. And then um, the ship was put at Dunlap Reef for quite a while and no one wanted to buy it. So eventually they sank it and supposedly it's right off of Sunny's. So that's pretty interesting. <laughs> this gentleman goes out with sonar and has found it. And that they, ident they identified it. I don't know if anyone knows um, Dr. Richard Boyd, who's an underwater archaeologist, retired now. He was working on this, and he identified it as probably the pride. So um, I was able to find more on the family. Um, the name of the father was Jacob Wilson, and he um, came from Norway and first ended up in Racine. He bought the ship in Racine. I found an article that told when he um, purchased the ship. And then he brought it and they moved up here to uh, Door County. And as I say, eventually the ship sank and um, the Wilson family lived in um, Nassawapi or somewhere over there. Um, and eventually the father, the father Jacob passed away and then his wife and they had another son, Charles, who passed away um, from tuberculosis, which is a pretty sad story. But now they're all on find a grave. <laughs> they put them there. <laughs> but they're all probably going to find a grave. So were they, um, they did were they all entered were they all entered by anonymous? No, <laughs> actually um, by one of Mike's friends. So yeah. um, I had found the articles and then well, that, she put them up there. Yeah. I don't know her myself, but her name's D, so you'll see D put them up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the um, what well, Dunlop's Reef is just off of Sunny's a little yeah. bit. Yeah, right. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, pretty interesting. And um, I know I've seen those twigs sticking out. Apparently, it's um, pretty low now. You yeah, can't see it, but um, the ship is sunk right there somewhere. It depends on it, it depends on if we have high water or not. Um, yeah, it'll be exposed when the water's really low. I'll have to yeah, run over it yeah. next year with my sonar and see if I can yeah, see Yeah, there something. you go. Yeah. Said it doesn't always appear. It depends on certain, certain situations, but you'll be able to find it. Um, and then the- Sunny? Sunny's Pizza. What? Sunny's Pizza so here in Sturgeon Bay. It's right by Sunny's Pizza? 
Yeah, right yeah. off of the uh, uh, right. The Next reef the is right water, there. Right yeah. by, off the breakwater. If you so the reef, the reef is no, just it, it's off the end of the um, old bridge, railroad. The Bridgewater, thing. where you walk down from the Bridgewater between Sunnies and uh, Bridgewater, or the bridge. Yeah, whatever. yeah, okay. Hotel okay, is okay right there. on that. The old There's railroad. A big drop. Right if you go yeah. out about ten feet off of the shore, it drops down to about 20, 25 feet. Yeah. Let me Straight um, down. let me show oh. you I, um where Dunlap Reef is on Google Maps. There it is. Whoops, I just lost it. I had it. Um, and it, you don't see it normally. It's this thing right here, but sometimes you'll see little, oh. little sticks. So they had it sitting there for quite a while. And then apparently they sank it because nobody wanted to buy it. It had sunk, it had tipped over twice. So no one wanted to take a chance. But here's the other thing. Another gentleman came in and he had a picture of Dunlap Reef <laughs> by coincidence of there was a lighthouse out there, which I didn't, I, I didn't put two and two together, but there was an actual building out there, a lighthouse, and oh, he had wow. a picture of it. And it turns out, um, I can probably pull it up. Um, it turns out that this lighthouse, when they took it down, they moved it to, here's a picture, um, to Sturgeon Bay, and it's on 4th Avenue. It's just down from the library a little bit. Um, 411, I think, 4th Avenue. And it they took the tower off. Here's the here's another picture. This tower is gone. But the building itself, oh, here's the building on 4th Avenue now. Oh. So who knew? That house is it's a former lighthouse. Oh, oh wow. And isn't that funny? Yeah. Wow. Well, I wonder if the people who live there now know about that. Huh. I think they might. It's under um the you know, the state has that um, database of architects, architectural oh, places. Yeah. It's, it's listed in that. They show the oh. picture of it today. God, that's it. neat. Yeah. yeah that would be quite I a job to move. Yeah. Yeah. Back then, uh, I think 24 or something like that is when they moved it. I found that you always learn so yeah. many interesting things. You must know? must have been low water that year. Yeah. <laughs> So um, I can actually, um, I don't know when, when he's publishing that article and he's gonna write a more in-depth article on the pride at some point. So I'll let you know when, I, when that all oh, comes do, out. Please do. Yeah. So one other interesting thing I had no idea about, again, from these underwater archeologists, they're looking into something called SCRIP. Has anyone heard of SCRIP? S-C-R-I-P. Yeah. Um, something related to how sailors were paid. Um, in this, yeah, in, in this case, lumber companies paid their uh, workers with script. Oh, okay. Well, wasn't that script with a T on the end? No. no. Or no? No. No. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so if you look oh. it up, they'll talk about script and coupons. And apparently, from what I've read, um, this script was given to workers for different companies like lumber companies in northern Wisconsin a lot um, and they would use it in the company store to buy food and rent oh, right he rent and all different things um, so it was kind of like a um, money in this case I have the picture of this script which was oh, okay this is from Horns Pier here the lumber huh. company over at Horns Pier and they're um, and Dick Boyd is asking if anyone knows about anywhere else that they gave script in Door County besides this uh, horn company that was a big lumber, lumber horn lumber company at Claybanks. Does anyone, are you familiar with that old, the old time that was one of the big ports for shipping out lumber? So this is apparently the actual coins that were the script for that company, but did anyone else in the county give out script? Anyone know? Or anyone know I, who I could ask? <laughs> he said I should um, ask my um, anyone I I know if we can figure that out. So anyway, well, is there anyone around yet from the Washburn Lumber Company? Because I I knew I Doug, know. but he's long gone. So yeah, I don't know mm -hmm. anything about it. But um, yeah, the, the lumber. Would the Sawyer family know anything? Which family? Sawyer from Fish Creek area. 
Oh, I don't know. Hmm. They had the lumber mill there in Fish Creek. I see. Yeah, maybe I should see if we can. That was a 1900, so uh -huh. and I can't remember who they were, but somebody was telling me they, they showed me some pictures of all the old lumber yard and everything there. Mm -hmm. you know, 1900s, I guess. So the family had the pictures. Yes, somebody from the yeah. family had them. So. Yeah, someone like that may know about this sort of thing, but um, it's pretty interesting because these coins do say on there WH Horn Prados, and they look like real coins, you know, that were printed. You know when they were from? What, what era, what, time, what dates? Um, no, I don't see the dates here. Because if it was, you know, in the 1900s or something, you might be checked with somebody like Tom Hurlash, who his family had the bank here for so many years. Yeah, that's an idea. He might have known something about yeah. it too. That is an idea. Yeah, I'll, maybe I'll ask. Give you an idea where to look. Maybe he knows something, who knows? Mm -hmm. Well, good, thank you for the help. <laughs> <laughs> but another interesting thing I didn't know about, I wasn't aware of Scrip. So no. I've run I've run across it, um, but down on the East Coast, Maryland, Virginia, mm -hmm. where uh, the mill workers had sure. Scrip. They were paid in Scrip right. to that use in the company store. Usually paper too, though. Yep, paper too. Yeah, yeah. When and I when I Google this, you'll find. You know they're selling these things at eBay and that sort of thing nowadays. Huh. Yeah, there was a lot from the Civil War era. Was there? Trip. Yeah, the whole money thing was interesting. <laughs> um, if yeah. anyone wants to come on the twentieth, I think it is, we're doing a history book discussion about Andrew Jackson, and the banking was questionable back then. If they were going to have a federal bank and all this sort of thing, so the it all sort of plays into that at the first drafts of the Wisconsin Constitution outlawed on banks in within the state. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty interesting, you know, to see how people were, it's almost like the Bitcoins of the day, right? <laughs> <laughs> but an interesting Wait, did, they, did they when, outlaw? When is that, Laura? It's, I think it's the 20th. Um, John Harris has been doing history book discussions here for a long time. And it's on our calendar. It's uh, two okay, in the I'll afternoon. Okay, I'll take a look at it. Yeah. He's been doing history book discussions for about 20 years now. I know I, I did my senior thesis on the monetary history of the United States back. Did you? Way wow. back in the 60s, so. Yeah. So you know oh, about the boy. Wisconsin. Kind of. You're, you're important, Steve. Kind of. <laughs> is, there, is, is there some is some significance of October 20th? I, don't there, know. Uh, I have six different meetings on October 20th <laughs> that I could go to. I'm getting my booster I mean, shot. Why I'm October, getting my booster shot on the 20th. On 20th. Huh? Rather than spread out, they're all on that Wednesday. Isn't that funny? <laughs> yeah, oh, I don't geez. know. I thought maybe it was some special day or something, you know? <laughs> Just happens to be like that, I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Well, I've got to go. Thanks, people. We're coming up in yeah. an hour, so I guess we'll call an end to this meeting. Okay. Right. See you Perfect. in a month. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, Bye. Bye. Hey, Laura. Yes. Yeah, I just want to let you know I won't be available on the November meeting. Okay. Thank you. I'll be in Colorado. Well, I'll try to get on but i may be in colorado that day so uh -huh. i won't be able to make it so okay well, have a good have a good trip yeah uh, if i can i'll, I'll get, get you through zoom okay if okay, i can great. okay thanks you bet bye